I was born in Hong Kong, yeah. yeah. 1928, yeah. 19 My father was Frederico Silva. Everyone called him Ico. With Silva, I don't know about his ancestry because there's so many of us. You don't know which branch we really belong to. My mother has a little more uh, distinctive last name, Barreto, and uh, her family were one of the pioneer families of Hong Kong. Before that, they were they came from Macau. Before that, they came from India, Calcutta, and Portugal somewhere along the way. We don't really know the national origins of the original Barreto, um, but they they were a big noise family uh, in Calcutta, a, a banking family. Hmm. In Calcutta. In Calcutta, of all places, yeah. Okay. In fact, uh, they were a prominent family, uh, a very religious, Catholic family, in, in business, in uh, banking. In fact, uh, when I went to Bombay a few years ago, I visited the Barreto High School. <laughs> really? And the Barreto High School uh, was founded by one of my ancestors, uh, I could trace the, uh, down to myself, uh, a Catholic uh, uh, missionary-run school. Uh -huh. Long, long ago, yeah. When did they emigrate from Calcutta to Hong um, Kong? I th think they came around the 1820s okay. from India to Macau. To Macau. They uh, probably moved around, this family, Barreto family, moved around a bit. There are a lot of Barretos in, uh, in the Philippines uh, and in Macau. And from Macau, uh, when Hong Kong opened up, they followed and came to Hong Kong. Okay. So were the Barretos um, in, involved in, uh, in business in, in Macau? I don't know. I think they were employees. Okay. of Jardines. And when Jardines moved to Hong Kong, some of them moved to Hong Kong. Yeah. My feeling was that Jardines, when they were trading in China, in the Wampo factories, they also kept a little office in Hong Kong. Okay. And, uh, oh. and I, one of my uh, ancestors may have worked for them, and when they established office in, in Hong Kong, after the Opium War, mm -hmm. they followed Jardines uh, to work in Hong Kong. Okay. I have it on record uh, uh, that in 1847, my great-great-grandfather was in Hong Kong working for Jardines, and I think it was his, uh, his son was, may have been a clerk, mm -hmm. also with Jardines in Macau. Okay, so the, the, the original Barreto uh, worked for Jardines, uh, came to Hong Kong in 1847. His son also worked I with think Jardines. so. I think so. Um, I don't know that for a fact, okay. but uh, on this particular article that I read, uh, there was an A. Barreto working for Jardines in Macau. Okay. A uh, or B, I, I, Amadeo or Bartolomeo, you know, Bartolomeo. they all have the same names. I see? think so, yeah, yeah. because I, I've, I've come across his father, uh -huh. Bart Bartolomeo, uh, okay. a trader in Macau. Yeah, well, that's probably, well, it's probably the same. The confusion yeah. sometimes lies in that, uh, Different generations bear the same name. Right, you know? right. Uh, but uh, we, so I refer to them in my, with my wife as Jab 1 and Jab 2. <laughs> because J.A. Barreto and J.A. Barreto Jr. <laughs> so tell me, okay, tell me a little bit about your family life in Hong Kong. What you remember about um, the house you lived in, the relatives in the house or outside the home. What was the community, what, what was your family life like? Well, my uh, childhood life 
is really divided into two different sections, like two different sections. Uh, my quiet life in Hong Kong, I lived in Kowloon, for that matter, uh, everything was disrupted on Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And I was just about 13 going on 14. So it was a different life. Uh, up to uh, the year four, I was 14 years old and uh, Pearl Harbor uh, came about. I went to Macau. I lived for one year in Hong Kong under the Japanese and uh, survived as we could. Uh, my mother selling a little bit of jewelry and uh, then we moved to Macau uh, and I stayed for three years in Macau as a refugee. So my life was compartmentalized uh, that way. But Speaking of my earlier days, I was just an ordinary uh, uh, kid running around, going to, Las, going to La Salle College oh. with all the Portuguese boys. Mm -hmm. Before that, primary school with the Marinol nuns and uh, living in Chim Sa Choi. The whole, I was living uh, on Chatham Road on the corner of Austin Avenue. And Austin Avenue, nearly uh, three quarters of the houses in Austin Avenue <laughs> were Macanese families. So we all knew each other. That was our district. Uh, Granville Road was another road, all Macanese families. You know, that particular area of Kowloon uh, on, the eastern, on the eastern side of Nathan Road, mm -hmm. where the western, uh, westerners lived there. A lot of Portuguese families. Did you live with just your family or were there other relatives in the house or? Um, no, just my own family. We were big enough. Was either, uh, uh, there were, How many in your family? Tell me. Uh, I have uh, um, two older sisters, two younger brothers, myself, that's five, and a father and mother, seven. And uh, my father was a clerk working at one time for cable and wireless. Oh, sure. And then, um, just about the time I was born, my grandfather, who had moved to uh, Saigon, won a huge sweep, a lot of big, big money. Uh, a lottery? A, a, a lottery, race horse? A, a lottery. A horse, a, horse a horse race lottery. A horse race lottery, uh, okay. Uh, the Calcutta Derby. <laughs> Big money in those days, I think. Interesting. Two, three hundred thousand dollars, which is probably well over mm. two, three million or more mm. in today's currency. So, uh, my mother bought a bigger house, and uh, my father quit his job, became a stockbroker, and uh, oh. lots of ups and downs uh, as a stockbroker. And uh, eventually, when I turned 21, I took over his business. He had died, and then uh, just when I was 21, and I took over his business and became a stockbroker in Hong Kong. I was a member of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange I see. For, for 25 years or so. Oh. Uh, the youngest, one time, the youngest member ever on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Oh because you had to be 21 right. uh, mm -hmm. to be responsible with your signature. And mm -hmm. I was just 21 when my father died. Can I bring you back to the school, your school life after uh, outside your family? What was your school life like? Well, uh, in the beginning, primary school run by the nuns, mm -hmm. the Mary Knoll nuns, very close to them. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, when I was, I think, about 13, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit before that, about nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. I went to La Salle with the Christian brothers. At that time, La Salle was uh, segregated. Uh, so many people wanting to get to La Salle that uh, the classes, every form was divided into three forms. Say you joined uh, class six, there was a class six A, class six B, class six C. Class six A, uh, primarily all Portuguese boys. Mm -hmm. 
uh, C, all Chinese boys. B was a mixed lot, and uh, the Portuguese boys, the Eurasian boys, the Vietnamese boys, Philippine boys, Chinese boys is a mixed group. One of the reasons is uh, language as a, uh, the language as a second language, the Portuguese boys had to learn either Portuguese or French, whereas the C class, the Chinese boys, had to learn Chinese reading and writing.